I'm so excited to talk Christmas trees. I'm so excited. Let's talk about Christmas trees. So let me tell you the backstory of how this got started about, I don't know, it, it could be, it was over 10 years ago, probably 15. A friend of mine who worked in the president's office of a big university nearby, and she ran events, asked me if I wanted to go to a class that was being done by a, um, it was a class being put on by a wholesale floral company for um, people who decorated Christmas trees in department stores. So did I want to go to this class? I'm like, yeah. So we drive over there. You have to like have a special card to get in because it's not open to the public. And everybody else there were like department store tree decorators there to learn about it. And so I'm going to share with you what I learned. And I think when you're setting up your tree, um, whether it's your own tree or whether you're setting up the tree in your family and like you're the kid, you will know. So you you will have the best tree. So let's jump in um, to 11 steps to a gorgeous Christmas tree. And the tree in this picture is actually my very own living room Christmas tree. So um, I've got 11 steps. I'm, I wasn't able to add it in before I started, but I am going to go back into the comments on Facebook and the um, description box on YouTube and put in a link to a handout that has all of these things. So if it goes too fast or you're like, I can't remember all this, that's fine. You'll be able to download the handout too. So let's jump into it because it's a lot more fun to do stuff when you know all the pro tips. So tip number one, is it's all about the lights. It turns out that the lights are the most important thing. If you don't get this right, it you're you're sunk. And even Home Depot figured it out. And you can see this is an ad. And um, this tree looks good because it has a lot of lights, but I'm gonna show you what they did on it that, that I think is like kind of cheating. So the rule of thumb is that you need a hundred lights per square foot or per, not square foot, but per foot of tree. So if you have a seven foot tree, you need 700 lights. But I would say that if you want to make a tree look amazing, um, put even more and you're not going to have it be evenly distributed. So you don't want to do a hundred lights on the first foot, a hundred lights on the second foot. As the tree gets narrower and in diameter, you don't need as many lights at the top to have the same impact. So in a seven foot tree, if you've got 700 lights, you'll probably use like three or 400 of those lights in the first like two feet, and then it will get more sparse as it goes up. So hundred lights per foot. When you, if, so if you don't have that many lights on your tree, then just go get inexpensive lights um, and that will make a difference. So you can see here, there is lots of light. Again, that's my actual tree. So there's lots of light on that tree. And in fact, there are only a few other things you can see besides the light. So if you get a pre-lit tree, you're probably gonna need to add more lights. So notice the description here. This is a seven foot tree and it has 460 lights. This is an insufficient number of lights. So what they did was, do you see what they did here? They blurred it. They blurred the photo to make the lights look more impactful than they actually are. So don't be fooled by the picture. Don't be fooled by the picture. I've even seen like going into stores, I won't name them, but going into, let's say, big box home improvement type stores where they've put extra lights on their demo trees. So be careful, you want a lot of lights. Now, make sure that you take the lights all the way back to the trunk, not just around. You want lights all the way down to the trunk. And if you, and what you should start with is a string of lights all the way down the trunk. Now, pre-lit trees aren't gonna have that. So my suggestion would always be to buy a string of lights for just a couple of dollars that you will string all along the trunk of the tree so that there's just this column of light down the middle of the tree. And I'm going to show you a little bit why that's important. But if you don't, if you don't take away anything else, you guys, a lot of light, you're going to need a lot of light. All right. If the lights 
need to be hidden. Like you have a tree that has, it isn't have really fluffy branches, like each, each twig and branch are really small, then you might need um, floral wire. And you can get that just at Dollar Tree um, to attach the, the lights to keep them from falling off or to keep them from showing too much. I haven't had to do this, but I've seen people who did. So you may have to do that. Now, there's no one right way to put those lights up. But if you start at the top and go to the bottom, it's more effective, especially if you run out. And you want to start with the plugless end. So you start with the plugless end on top, the, 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 like we would call it the female end, the one that doesn't have the prongs. And you're going to start with that so that at the bottom, then you can connect the next one in, right? If you put the plug up at the top, you're going to be in trouble. And guess what's crazy? Before we did this tonight, I started setting up a Christmas tree and in my family room. And I was putting the lights on and I didn't do this. I didn't start at the top. I started at the bottom. And guess what? I ran out. And so I need to learn my own lesson. I ran out of lights. So if you have a pre-lit tree, but it doesn't have enough lights and you need to add lights, one pro tip is to use a different kind of lights than the ones that are already on the tree. So you can use different shape lights. You can use different color lights. You can put twinkle lights on and what was on there was solid lights. But if you're going to add lights to the tree, it is great to add a different kind of light than the one that the tree came with. That different variety of light is gonna really make a difference for you. You see, I'm talking a lot about lights. All right, I'm done talking about lights. We know the lights, that's the key. That is the key. All right, step number two, fluffing the tree. So when you take the tree out of the box, the first time you can expect to spend for a seven and a, like a seven foot tree, an hour and a half fluffing that tree the first time. Now, once you've done it the first time, it's not going to take as long the next time because you will never get it flat again. But the very first time, it's going to take like an hour and a half to fluff a seven foot tree. So don't try to rush it because fluffing the tree makes a huge amount of difference in whether the tree looks good itself or not. So what you're going to do is you start at the bottom against the trunk, start at the bottom against the trunk, and then you do each branch from the center out. So you start at the center and you come out and you do each layer of the tree one layer at a time. So don't start at the bottom and do like all the section in front of you and then move over to your right and do that. Don't do that. Go around the tree in the first layer, then go around the tree in the next layer. <sighs> this takes time but it makes a huge difference. So um, imagine when you're, when you're fluffing the tree or sometimes the technical term is zhuzhing. When you're zhuzhing the tree, then one of the things that you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna imagine that the twigs that you're fluffing out are like the hands on a clock. So imagine that you want one hand at noon and a hand at two and one at four and one at six and and so on, right? You want it all around. You don't want all the branches sticking up and you don't want all of them sticking down or left or right. You want it around like hands on the clock of a tree. Also, some of the branches need to be pushed. Some of the twig things need to go backwards. Um, and so if, especially if, your trunk is not wrapped in any kind of like fake tree stuff. If the trunk is a piece of metal, you're going to need to um, put some of the twigs against the trunk straight up or straight down to kind of hide that metal in the trunk. So spend the time fluffing. If you have, if you have a well-fluffed tree and it has enough lights on it, if you don't even have any ornaments at all, it will still look 10 times better than your friends. So these are the two keys. So if you're doing your own tree again, or your kid doing your parents tree, like the tree in the family, or maybe you are a kid who has a tree in your own room, you can make a little tiny, like four foot tree look amazing. Ooh, I just shook my whole desk. You probably saw that. All right. Next, think three dimensional. So when, if you draw a tree, like if you draw a tree, it looks like a triangle, right? 
but you don't want your actual tree to look like a triangle. It want, you want to break the plane. So if you look on the left, you can see some stuff kind of coming off. On the right, you see that branch coming out. You want stuff coming off of the tree. You want to break the plane of the triangle of the tree. You want to give it some dimension. You can see some here coming out. You can see this coming off. You can see some stuff over here. And I'm going to show you some more too. So here they use flowers. They're not breaking. They're, they've got these poinsettias. They're not really breaking the plane too much, but it softens the edge of the tree. On this one, they've gone hog wild, right? They've got stuff really sticking out. But you, you do want to break the plane of the tree a little bit. So you can buy stuff for this. You can buy stuff that is like picks or bows or feathers, but you can also just go pick up some branches from your yard, narrow branches. Notice how these are narrow, narrow branches. And you can either just use the branch as is, or if your tree has a color scheme, you can just spray paint those branches and use them in your tree. And so you don't have to spend any money on it and still achieve this same look. You can even use those picks or even color branches at the top. You don't have to have a star. You can do berries um, like from your yard. Okay, tip number four, and there are 11 tips. The lights take the longest time. So that one was the longest. The rest of them go pretty fast. Tip number four, this is a game changer and hardly anybody does this, but don't leave your trunk lonely. Most people hang the ornaments around the like outside of the tree. They hang them on the edge of the tree. They hang them on the edge of the branches. But you need to put those shiny cheap ornaments, these glass balls that are super cheap, they should go in the interior of the tree. The reason is that they reflect light. And that's what you want. You, the, remember, light is key. Light is the key. And so if you hang these ornaments in the middle of the tree, all the lights that are in the middle of the tree are going to be bouncing off of these reflective ornaments. So anything you have that can reflect light should be in the inside of the tree. And it doesn't have to be everything you have. Like you may have enough to put reflective ornaments on the outside too. But if you only have enough shiny stuff for either the inside or the outside, make sure the inside of the tree is loaded with shiny stuff. That will reflect light and it will make a huge difference to you. Okay, tip five. Imagine that you have a set of a dozen ornaments in your of the same kind, right? You got a box and there's 12 in there. In your mind, divide the tree into four quadrants, four quarters, four sections. And you will put the number of ornaments that you have of that kind in um, divided up in evenly as much as possible into each of these quadrants. So if you have 12, you would divide the tree into these four quadrants and you would put three in one quadrant, three in another, three in another, three in another, right? You get them. You get the point. What if you only have two ornaments? That's okay. Divide the tree in half in your mind and put one in one half and one in the other. And it can be either left or right. Now, remember, it's a little hard to segment a tree like this because a tree is three dimensional and a quadrant is only two dimensional. And so you have to keep in your mind that you're also including not just this face of the tree that you're seeing, but also around the tree. Now, you don't have to put as many ornaments if you have a side of the tree that doesn't show. You don't have to put as many ornaments on the back of that, but it is helpful if you put at least some um, because that will give the tree depth. And that's the biggest mistake that people make with ornaments is just not giving the tree any depth, putting everything on the outside. All right. So where your lights are, that's where you put shiny stuff. So one of my favorite ornaments is like a little knitted sweater, but I don't hang that by a light because it won't reflect any light. I put the shiny ornaments by the lights, whether they're inside the tree or outside the tree shiny ornaments by lights. In fact, um, when I first start hanging actual ornaments, when I get to that part of decorating, when I'm hanging the ornaments, I'm going to be hanging the ornaments based on getting the shiny ornaments by the lights first. And then I start putting on the, the ornaments that aren't reflective, the ornaments that absorb light rather than reflect light. 
So it's crazy about decorating trees is that there's a lot more science and math. We've got reflection, refraction, and we've got dividing it into quadrants and breaking a plane. So there's a lot of science and math going on in decorating a tree. All right. Next tip is using garland and ribbon. Sorry, I was moving this around a little bit. I just wanted to see if there were any uh, questions in the chat or comments. So um, garland and ribbon. So garland and ribbon are really powerful in trees. And especially if you are like, let's say you're a kid and you just got a tree in your room, but you don't have um, money to like spend to put ornaments on it. Um, you can um, hack this by just taking colored paper and making um, like fake paper ribbon out of it. I'll show you another trick in a second, but garland and ribbon add a lot to a tree. So the um, you can see there's lots of different kinds. The tree on the left, they've actually strung two different kinds of garland around it. There's like a gold pennant banner, and then there's also popcorn. You can string popcorn on a string if you're looking for inexpensive Garland is just take a big long string and needle and you know, big long, it's thread, not string, but thread a needle and then pop some popcorn and sit there and watch your favorite Christmas movie and string popcorn. You can also do the garland um, or ribbon from the top down. So you see that on the left, it's wrapping around and on the right, it's going from top to bottom. Either way is fine. There's no preference. You can lay it on the top like this or you can shove it back into the tree. Both work. I will say that for me personally, I found that shoving it back, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second, shoving it back works a little bit better. But what you can do is you can experiment. So if you're a kid helping your um, family set up the tree, you might want to do some of it, like do one or two strands just laid down and then one or two that you shove back in in sections. I'll show you what I mean. And then just let everybody vote and decide what works best. So I also love this method, and this was from a website called A Pop of Pretty. And what she did was she took two kinds of ribbon and she tied a knot in the middle and then put that in the tree and then let it go down from there. And it it worked really well. Um, so there are lots of things that you could do with ribbon. So if you would like to try to do something fancy like this and talk about math with your Christmas tree, that would be amazing. This is what I mean by shoving the ribbon into the tree, where you're like tucking it in. You're not letting it just hang out in one straight thing. You've got it tucked in in spots. Either one is good. Again, I usually tuck it in. Now, feel free to do more than one kind of ribbon. We saw that in the other one. And you can, so don't worry if you have like pieces of ribbon left over from um, like packages or something like that use it. You don't have to have the, um, like all the same. It's absolutely fine, but we've got more math with ribbon. So for a tree, we've got, we need a hundred lights per foot, and then we need 10 feet of ribbon per foot. So it's easy round numbers, but about 10 feet of ribbon per foot. So if you have a seven foot tree, you need like 70 feet of ribbon or garland or whatever you're using. So one thing that you have to check, though, is because people say, well, how many spools of ribbon is that? It depends on how long that spool is, because you could get a spool that is, you know, 20 yards. And that's another thing you have to keep in mind is that ribbon is sold by the yard and a yard is three feet. So you're going to have to do some math because you can't divide 10 by three evenly. So you're going to have to do a little math when you buy ribbon. But this is the math that you need, 10 feet per foot of tree. Now, what if you don't have any ribbon? That's okay. Um, I will show you a trick for that in a minute. Pro tip, put on the ribbon before the ornaments. If you try to put the ribbon on after the ornaments, you will end up hiding all the ornaments and you, you will feel like you don't have any room. And so put the ribbon on before the ornaments. So your order will be fluff the tree, put the lights on, and then the ribbon. All right, so here's my tip. If you wanna put ribbon or garland on the tree and you don't have any money, then what you can do is look on Pinterest for, just search this, free printable bunting, Christmas. 
right? And you will find little things like this that you can print out and just tape to thread or string and hang on your tree. You'll find so many. You'll find ones that look like little Christmas lights. You'll find ones that look like little flags. You'll find ones that spell stuff out. And if they're too big, but you like it, you can just copy and paste it into um, PowerPoint and make it smaller. And so you will be able to have free garland or ribbon. Now, let's say that you want to have a big impact on your tree, but you don't have a lot of ornaments. If you will limit the colors, then you can get more bang for your buck. So in this tree, there actually aren't that many ornaments on it, but because everything follows that same red and white theme, it looks like more. Now, should you do a tree that's a color theme? That's totally up to you. There's no right or wrong. It's just whatever you like. But if you know that you don't have very many ornaments, then sticking to a color scheme will help. You can see how it looks here in both of these. This one that has like the ice blue and white on the left, and then the other one that's like red and like natural tan wood color on the right. They don't even need that much. They could be all, and even if you do like all homemade ornaments, you could cut out of construction paper. If they're all the same color or two colors or a maximum of three colors, it will make a big impact. So just here are a couple more examples of it. Now the tree on the left has a limited color palette. It has a lot of ornaments still. Um, and then you see that blue one on the right. So if you have a tree that's like a hodgepodge of ornaments, like this is a tree in our family room. This is our family tree. It has ornaments from everything. It has ornaments that, you know, I made in first grade are hanging on that tree. But what I do is I use green and red to unify it. So when you are standing next to it, it's still, it doesn't look like a mishmash because I have green and red ribbon and garland and some bigger ornaments. The star is red, some bigger ornaments that are those colors. Even if that tree is hodgepodge, the unifying color will give it some punch. Here, you can see like there's red in here and it pops out of it. Now, one thing that can add to that color is the presence that you wrap. So if you wrap the presence in paper that matches that color scheme, it makes that color scheme come out even more easily. All right. The second to the last tip is to use what you have. When you're decorating your tree, especially if you're a kid and you're getting your own like tree for the first time or your parents let you get a little tree for your room um, or they're letting you decorate the big tree and you need more ornaments, then there are a few things that you could do that you could find ornaments for free or almost free. So one of those is using pictures, using photos of family members, just print them out and you can use small clothespins. You can get clothespins super cheaply um, and attach them to the tree. You can also use Christmas cards, like from like you could save your Christmas cards for this year and decorate the tree with them next year. Or as Christmas cards come in this year, you can hang them on your tree. Um, you can also do letters. So like if there are any letters, like a long time ago, we used to write letters to people on paper with like your own handwriting. And if your family has some old letters, like love letters that your grandpa wrote to your grandma or something, you can copy those on cardstock or thick paper and then cut into sections. So then you've got like these letters of your family and it's free and it's, it looks so cool on a tree. You can also do, oh, I have my face here. Let me, let me pop out here so you can, well, now I'm big. Hi everyone. But um, so I'll go back to this, but I'm blocking some of the words. Um, the um, you can also do craft projects, of course. They don't have to be cute. They're part of the cool thing is if it's not cute, if it's just like a craft project you did, this is do you see what this is? This is a clear plastic cup, like a five cent cup with just cardboard underneath it or cardstock underneath it with little tiny things glued inside. This is just construction paper, this wreath right here. Um, this is an old wooden spool with just some words on a tiny piece of paper written on it. You can make these things, but you can also like, let's say you have some gloves or mittens that you've outgrown. Um, those make good Christmas decorations. If you have like baby shoes or booties or little hats from when you're a baby, even like if you take little 
if you have like baby Afghans, like if somebody knit an Afghan, you can cut those into pieces and cover them, cover inexpensive glass ornaments with those and, it, and you can get the color out of it. So don't feel like if you want a bunch of ornaments that you have to spend a lot of money. There are ornaments available everywhere. You can use toys. We actually have a number of stuffed animals in our family tree, um, but even old like toys that you got in McDonald's Happy Meals, um, those Happy Meal toys make great ornaments as well. So feel free to put in the stuff you like. Your Christmas tree should be a reflection of the things that you like. And so feel free, put in your favorite hobbies and things like that, that you have just around the house. Hanging on the tree makes it a decoration. All right, here's the last tip. When you have a shiny ornament, one that's going to reflect light and reflect light, then you want to make sure that it dangles, that it hangs freely, that it's not resting on a branch. You want to do that because if it dangles, then you will be able to, it will move a little bit. Like the heat will come on and it will, and it will move slightly in the airflow. And when it does, it will catch light. Somebody walks by a little airflow. It moves a little bit. As long as it dangles, um, it will, it will be able to reflect the light better. So make sure that your shiny ornaments hang freely because it's all about the light. So those are 11 steps to a gorgeous Christmas tree. Now, as soon as I'm done with the broadcast, which I will be in just a minute, um, as soon as I'm done, I'm going to go put the link to the handout that you can um, download and or print out whatever you want. And that has all of these tips and the recording of this will be up in case you want to watch it again while you're doing your tree or, or look at it. So I do want to thank you so much for joining me. Let me look to see. Let me move this out of the way. I don't see any questions in the chat. So I'm going to go ahead and end the, the live stream unless someone has a question. Um, you can feel free to ask a question. I'm so glad that you joined me tonight. I just decided at the last minute, like, I want to I want to share these tips. And especially if there are any kids watching, I just wanted to share these tips so that when you do it, then you, you, I promise you, when you know this stuff, you will go into department stores and you will look at their trees and you're like, oh, I know what they did there. Oh, I see what you did there. Or you'll walk into your friend's houses and you'll look at their trees and you'll be like, um, excuse me, next year, I think you should have me help you do your tree. And I promise you, if you want to earn a little extra money, you could probably offer to decorate people's Christmas trees for them. It's a business. Like people make money doing this for a business. One year I had shoulder surgery and um, I had surgery on my foot to, I had severed a tendon and I couldn't walk. I was in a wheelchair and I paid people to decorate my tree for me. So it's a, you can make a business out of it guys. You could. All right. Well, thank you so, so much for joining me. I'm going to stop sharing that slide deck and I just, I just want to thank you for, for joining. And I hope that you learned some tips about your tree and that your trees come out beautiful this year and every year. And I wish you a very Merry Christmas or Happy Hanukkah or whatever holiday you celebrate at this time. And I will see you Monday night. This coming Monday night. So this is Friday. Monday night, I'm going to be live streaming again. And I will be, oh my gosh, you guys, I have them all right. They're all stacked up right here. I'm going to be sharing my 16, I had 15, but I added one, 16 fabulous Christmas picture books. So be sure to join in um, and find all those. I got a big basket of them right here. I can't wait to share it with you. So I will see you guys on Monday night. Take care. Merry Christmas.